I talk a lot on my channel about the most optimal diet for weight loss, improving your overall health and longevity, nutrient timing, meal frequency, metabolic efficiency, workout frequency, and so on. And they're the exact same steps that I give to all my students and they've all gone to see some amazing results. So you know it works. But today, I wanna go a step above that. If you've ever seen the movie Inception, great movie by the way, but we're gonna go one level deeper. In this video, I wanna focus on what I arguably think is more important than all the things I just mentioned. Like I could give you the best information on weight loss and workouts on the planet, but, and here's the catch, but if what's going on in between your ears isn't in the right place, if you don't get this part right, you are gonna be severely disappointed with your results or lack thereof. And you're always gonna be living in yo-yo dieting city. You're just not gonna get results. Or you might get results at the beginning, but it's only temporary. It won't be sustainable. And this is the one thing that stands in the way for so many people. The problem is they don't actively realize it most of the time. It never dawns on them. If you have a complete plan of everything you need to do in order to help you get to where you wanna be, whether it's fat loss, building muscle, improving your overall health, healing an autoimmune disease, or all of the above. You can have that plan at your disposal, but if you don't have the right mindset when it comes to implementing it, it's not gonna work. You're not gonna be able to stick to it, or it's just not gonna get you to your goals. You're always gonna wanna go back to your comfort zone. So today, I'm gonna talk about the five most important mindset shifts that you need to make in order for you to lose fat, build muscle, and finally reach your weight loss goals and stop yo-yo dieting forever. Fair warning, what I'm about to share with you will most likely rattle your cage and trigger you. You might even feel personally attacked. It might even shatter your reality, but that's the point. Here's a big takeaway for you right off the bat. The more uncomfortable conversations you're willing to have with yourself, the better off and the more successful you're gonna be, not just with weight loss, but with overall life. Before we get started, Give this video a like, subscribe to my channel, and hit the bell to get notified every time I post a new video every week. Here's the thing. A lot of people want to change. That's why people make New Year's resolutions every year. The problem is only 8% of those people actually end up achieving those resolutions, and most people are completely off the wagon by February. Why? Because they're not ready to commit themselves to the necessary steps in order to actually get results. It's one thing to want something and know what you need to do in order to get there. It's another thing to be fully ready and committed to implement what you have to do. Those are two completely different things. So how do you shift the odds to your favor? Number one, create space in your life for change. If you wanna lose weight and change your body, you're gonna have to make some sweeping changes to your lifestyle. I want you to think about a glass full of water it's gone stale and maybe it's even contaminated. If you add more water to it, it's just gonna overflow. You need to dump a little bit out so you can add fresh, clear water. And what does that clean water do? It improves the overall quality of the water in the glass. But if you don't make space for those changes to happen, it's not gonna stick. It's just gonna overflow. You won't be giving yourself space to grow into the new and more awesome version that you're trying to become. And it starts with setting clear boundaries. For example, if you're in the US, the average adult is overweight. So you're gonna have to start moving your body more. That's why I'm a big fan of setting a goal of getting 10,000 steps every day. You're also gonna need to start working out, but truth be told, that's gonna take some time. You're also gonna need to follow a better diet than what you're currently doing, which is gonna require some changes because what you're currently doing right now isn't working. And those changes can have an impact on your social life. And this can be a big issue for a lot of people because we are social beings. You need to set social boundaries when you're trying to change. If you're a social butterfly and you love hanging out with your friends, then this might be challenging at first. But again, you're gonna need to set those boundaries to create that space to do these other things you need to focus on. Instead of always hanging out with your friends two to three times per week, for example, you might need to cut that down to maybe one or twice a week. So you can free up some of your time and use those extra hours to work out and prepare healthier meals. Speaking of which, you're also gonna need to create space nutritionally. If you're trying to improve your diet, but every time you hang out with your friends, you're either drinking and or you're going for fast foods, you need to set clear boundaries with them. You need to say, hey guys, these are now my new goals. And I'd really appreciate it if maybe we could change it up. Maybe we can do something that doesn't involve drinking and eating crappy food. Hopefully, your friends will understand and even hop on the bandwagon with you. And that's 
best case scenario. Another place where you need to carve out space is your schedule. Maybe you're going to have to become a morning person. And for the longest time, I never considered myself a morning person. I had these ready-made built-in excuses on why I couldn't wake up early, but it was just that they were just excuses. Nowadays, mornings are my favorite part of the day. That's when I get to practice mindfulness through meditation. That's when I go for my daily morning walk while drinking my bulletproof coffee. I also listen to audiobooks while I'm walking. That's when I get to practice gratitude through journaling. And guess what? I am a completely different person because of it. But I had to create space for that to take place. I had to pour some water out of my glass. Another thing is maybe you're gonna have to cut down on playing video games or watching Netflix. And you can use that time instead to meal prep. And you can use that reduced screen time to get more quality sleep. It starts with creating that space for yourself. Number two, say goodbye to your old self. This is a big one. You need to make peace with anything that you're leaving behind and that includes the old version of you. The idea of giving things up or give people up or give part of your life up in order to develop a new life that is the life that you want to live holds so many people back and they never get over it. One of the things I mentioned earlier is carving out space for your healthy lifestyle from your social life. Because here's the thing, you are the average of the five people you hang out with the most. You're also the average weight of the five people you hang out with the most. Think about it. So this lifestyle change that you're doing might mean that you're leaving some of your social life behind. You're leaving some of your friends behind. You're leaving an old part of you behind. So here's how it usually goes. You've decided to focus on yourself. You've decided that you wanna get healthy. You've decided that you wanna lose weight and get fit. But you have this group of friends even your closest friends that doesn't share this mindset. They're still doing the same stuff that you did back in high school and they don't like it. And they start to make fun of you because you're starting to become a different person because you now have different goals and interests. I mentioned this earlier, but this is why it's so important to draw boundaries. You need to draw the line in the sand. And if for some reason your friends are against this and this is worst case scenario, they make you feel bad. And this is the crabs in a bucket mentality. Like they're trying to pull you back to your old life. Then you need better friends. And this happens a lot and it holds so many people back. But you need to make a decision here because if you can come to terms with that, that will set you free. And it's gonna allow you to become this new person that you wanna be. For example, for me personally, I had to say goodbye to the old version of me that didn't have a good relationship with money. And I made a huge write up about this on my Instagram account. So make sure you follow me. The reason why I became that way is my family just didn't have a lot of money growing up and that shaped the way I looked at money and it kept me stuck for the longest time. There was a glass ceiling above me and I had to break through. I've used a lot of glass metaphors in this video. So if you're struggling with coming to terms with leaving something behind, if that's what's holding you back from reaching your goals, I highly recommend that you frame it in your head as though you're carving out space in your life in order for a new version to emerge. That's why it's step number one. And now you're filling your glass with the things that are gonna give you the life that you want. Listen, it's okay to put yourself first, okay? It's okay to be a little selfish. And I don't even like to call it that. It's called self-love. Number three, be open-minded. I want you to be open to different ways to get to your goals that might actually work better for you. Maybe you have this grand plan in your head or maybe you bought this plan last year and you're gonna follow everything to a T because you've seen it work for other people. Or maybe it worked for you in the past so you're committed to it and you're now going through the process again, but it's not working. So you're frustrated and you're left wondering like what's going on. You're like, I'm following everything like how I did it before, but I'm not seeing results. I see this other person and he or she is getting results, but nothing is happening this time. This is a perfect time to take a step back, come at it from a completely unbiased perspective and reconsider what you're doing. Because if you keep doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different outcome, that is the definition of insanity. You need to come to terms that maybe you need to try something else. But here's the problem when you identify with a certain diet. It almost becomes a religion for a lot of people and going vegan or vegetarians are perfect examples of this. People identify with these diets and with it comes the sunk cost bias. You need to be open-minded with trying different things. Don't be so attached. It's okay if you've been vegan or vegetarian for the last couple of years and you initially got some success. You initially lost weight, but now 
it's not working anymore. And if you reach that point and it's starting to affect your health, you don't feel good because you're missing key vitamins and minerals like vitamin K2 and vitamin B12 that you can only get from animal products. You need to accept that. It's okay if it's not working. Get rid of your sunk cost bias. You don't have to be vegan or vegetarian for the rest of your life. You can say, yeah, I had a good experience with it. I did it for ethical reasons, but it started to affect my health and my health is more important. Now I'm doing something else. Plus, if you're really worried about the environment, pastured animals from ethical and regenerative sources are actually carbon negative. Eating plant-based meat substitutes like Beyond Burger, yeah, that's no good for the environment. Number four, fully commit to change. Don't have a backup plan. You need to fully commit to change so you can eliminate the chance of you making excuses. This built-in excuse behavior is one of the biggest things that holds people back from making change. And this is hardwired in our DNA. Why? Because it leads to the path of least resistance and we will always default to that to the point where most of the time you don't even realize that you're making excuses so don't even entertain it this is why taking charge of things you have complete control over is so crucial when it comes to instituting change and one of the things you have full control over is your environment this is why you should never ever ever and i cannot stress this enough stock bad food or trigger foods at home if you're new to my channel and you're watching this you need to go to your fridge and your pantry after watching this video and you need to do a complete purge of anything that doesn't contribute to your goals. You need to throw it out or if you feel bad throwing out food, then donate it to your local food bank. Do not eat it on your way there. You need to be ruthless about this. You can't think, oh, I feel bad, so I'll just save it for later. No. Think about your stash of protein bars, which are really just glorified Snickers bars with some crappy low quality protein in it. You feel bad throwing it out, so you eat it instead. You need to reframe that mindset because you're putting $3 or however much you paid for that bar. You're actively putting $3 over your health and your progress. Something doesn't sound right there. Your health is worth so much more than that. Now, why is it so important to do a complete purge? Well, human beings are not wired for self-control. We're just not. So if you stock ice cream in your freezer, for example, and you're saving it for your cheat meal next week, but one day, let's say you're having a bad day, guess what you're gonna reach for? And you're probably gonna eat the entire thing. And having these trigger foods at your house just goes back to having built-in excuses. Don't even put yourself in that position. Having it at your house also eats away at your willpower. It's like having the forbidden fruit in your fridge and it's just calling out your name every time you open the fridge. Like, why would you do that to yourself? That's basically torture. It's not helpful. That's why you should never rely on sheer willpower alone because your willpower runs out. Again, I can't stress this enough. If you're making dietary changes, just ruthlessly get rid of everything that doesn't contribute to your new lifestyle. Leave the fat version of you behind. That's not who you are anymore. This is why I'm a big fan of starting with the end in mind and working backwards from there. You need to ask yourself, who do I want to become? What is my end game? And then you want to get rid of everything that doesn't contribute to that. Do you see what I mean here? Like whether it's food you stock in your fridge or people you hang out with, if they're not adding to your goals, you need to get rid of them or at least put as much distance between you and them. They're just distractions at this point that eventually leads to excuses. This is why it's so, so, so hard to change. You're already going to be fighting an uphill battle because the old version of you, the fat version of you is going to be fighting tooth and nail to keep you stuck, to keep you from evolving. Don't make it any harder by making yourself battle your environment because you have complete control of that. Speaking of which, the people that are close to you that are most likely going to be living with you, if there's someone in your life that plays a huge role in influencing your decisions, especially when it comes to food, I cannot recommend enough that you need to chat with them. You need to communicate your goals and what you're trying to achieve. Get them on your team and tell them what they need to do to support you because it is so easy to use other people as an excuse on why you can't lose weight because it completely shifts the blame from you to the other person. That's weak. Don't do that. You're better than that. So if you can remove people from your list of excuses, I love your chances of success. Number five, be flexible with your end game. For a lot of people, losing those last five pounds 
probably won't make you any happier. Yeah, you might see some changes in the mirror. You might see an extra vein pop or your abs might look a little better. And you're gonna be like, oh, that's nice. But if losing those extra five pounds throws a wrench and completely changes your new lifestyle that you've fallen in love with. What I mean by that is if losing those last five pounds means you can't have your weekly treat or you have to completely cut out dark chocolate or eat less butter or eat less avocado or you start to feel deprived, then you need to ask yourself, is it worth it? Listen, if you can't learn to love yourself now where you currently are, losing those last five pounds won't make you any happier. 100% guaranteed. That's why I've been focusing on making sure that you have a good relationship with yourself first and foremost on my recent videos because it's so, so, so important. You want to come from a place of love when you're trying to change your body. You want to do it because you love your body, not because you hate it. Because if you attach your happiness to losing those last five pounds and you're struggling to get there and you have to really start to restrict yourself in order to get there, then it might not be worth it. And the reason why it's hard is your body is trying to tell you something. It's trying to say, hey, I'm happy with this new body set weight. So it's actually fighting you to stay there because it's healthy and happy right now. But you're trying to fight against that. Now you're fighting against your physiology. So it's entirely possible that you're going to be happier and healthier if you just listen and accept what your body is trying to tell you. For example, full transparency, and I always try to be transparent. I don't look like that every day. I look more like this, and I'm happy with my body either way. The only difference is I'm happier and healthier when I look like the latter, because that dude gets to eat dark chocolate and pistachios every day, and he doesn't have to actively count calories. And he gets to have a cheat meal every week and doesn't feel bad about it. Can I be leaner? Sure. Being intellectually honest with myself, this is the body I get, with what I'm currently doing. And I'm perfectly okay with that. I can live with that. And I am perfectly happy and content. To me, that's the most important thing. Listen, change is never easy. It can be downright scary because you're meeting a new version of yourself that you've never met before. While at the same time, having your old self fight kicking and screaming to keep you where you're at, to keep you stuck. But if you want something you've never had before, you need to do things you've never done before. And you're gonna need to make some pretty big changes. And that's just part of the process. So you need to make a decision here. And if you follow all the things I just mentioned in this video, you're gonna make some permanent changes in your life and stop yo-yo dieting once and for all. Your life will change. And you know what? It's absolutely worth it. The next question then becomes, how are you actually supposed to eat if you wanna lose weight? Because here's the thing. 80% of your body composition is determined by your diet. You can't just freestyle this part. Do you have a proven plan that you can follow? To help you with that, I wanna give you a free copy of my Lean Body Blueprint. This is how I melted all the fat around my stomach without depriving myself of my favorite foods or wasting hours at the gym. It's a simple four-step process specifically designed for busy professionals and it's the exact same blueprint that I teach to all my private coaching clients and they've all gone to see some amazing results. If you want to be the next success story, then download your free copy of the Lean Body Blueprint right now. There's going to be a link somewhere at the top here or in the description box. Just click on it, type in your email, and I'll send it to you right away. All right, that's all I've got. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and share it with your friends. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I post a new video every week. And hey, leave a comment below if you have any questions about this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. First, high five.